24, I'm going to invite you to stand with me. Now, I'm reading out of the New King James Version. You may be holding a different translation in your hand. I'm just going to ask that you follow along. Proverbs 18, 24. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. But there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. The best manuscripts for this verse says the, 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 the way they translate the text is they say in order to be friendly means he may come to ruin and warns that person who makes friends too easily and too indiscriminately and does so to his own destruction. A man who has friends must himself be friendly. In order to gain friends, you go out of your way. That's what he's saying. In order to gain, in order to get people to like you, you go out of your way. You're over friendly because you want you want to reap their friendship back. And what and what and what the proverb is teaching us is that someone who does that will ultimately find their life in ruin. Because you are uh, sacrificing your moral standards for friendship. In order to have friends, you must be friendly. And sometimes we go too far, we become over friendly. Or worse yet, we compromise our moral standards. So that we can be friends. That's what the proverb says. But, he says, but there is a friend mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. who sticks closer than a brother. That word friend here is a strong, uh, a strong emphasis on the word friends indicating it is one who loves and was used of Abraham when the Bible said he was a friend of God. Abraham had family. Abraham had friends. Abraham had servants. Abraham was a respected businessman. Abraham was a respected ruler of his time. People wanted to be Abraham's friend because of who he was, what he could do. But the Bible said Abraham was a friend of God. Meaning that Abraham chose the friendship of God over the friendship of neighboring kings over the friendship of neighboring rulers over those who could bless him those who could influence his business uh, pursuits but he chose rather to be a friend of God meaning he refused to compromise his moral standards do you follow what I'm saying so that's the backdrop to what we work at. All right, John, that, that, that was my intro. You ready? Now, JC says I need to update my playlist. But here we go. This Mother Riddle, forgive me. I know this is sacrilege, but I got young people in my church now, so I gotta, I gotta do something. Do y'all remember this? 
If you remember this, that means you're my age or possibly older. <laughs> or possibly older. But this is what we used to rock out to back in the day, Houdini and friends. All right, we, we can cut it before they go into the before they go into the verse. They might <coughs> he might say something that's not too holy, but So we're going to look at this Proverbs, and today we're going to talk about friends, okay? Our Father and our God, we turn our attention heavenward. We thank you for life and for health and for strength. Thank you that you woke us up this morning. Thank you, Lord. Gave us sound mind. You gave us something godly in our heart that caused us to come to the house of the Lord. And now that we are assembled here and gathered in this place and at this time and in your presence, speak from heaven. Cause the oracles of God and the principles of truth to be pressed down in our heart and an imprint made on our very soul that we might live thereby cause us to be better because of the word of God Amen. cause our souls to be enriched that we might live and not die yeah. this is the prayer we offer now we ask it in the name of your son the beloved Christ and all of God's people said amen. 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 Amen again. You may be seated all over the church. The word proverb means to be like. Thus, Proverbs is a book of comparisons between concrete images and life's most profound truths. Proverbs are simple, moral statements or illustrations that highlight and teach fundamental realities about life itself. The sum of all of Solomon's wisdom is personified in Christ Jesus. 1 Corinthians 1.30 says, But of him you are in Christ Jesus, who became for us wisdom from God righteousness sanctification redemption as it is written he who glories let him glory in the Lord Paul is saying by that verse is that Jesus Christ became the living manifestation of the wisdom of God if you ever wanted to see the wisdom of God all you had to do was look and listen to Jesus Christ. That's who he was. In our study of John, we, re we recall that Jesus Christ said himself, I don't say anything of my own accord. Yeah, right, right. The only thing I speak is what I hear my father speak. Amen. Amen. If daddy doesn't say it, I don't say it either. Right. Right. He said, I'm not here to offer my own will, my own testimony, my own thoughts of life. He said, I only speak what the Father speaks. Amen. And as a result, he becomes the personification of the wisdom of God. Amen. That's what he does. Amen. Are you with me on that? Amen. Now, Proverbs is what they call wisdom literature. Amen. And as a result, you got to handle it differently. You teach it differently. You preach it differently. It doesn't, it doesn't flow like a narrative text or anything like that. And so we're just going to walk our way down, down through it, verse by verse. Amen? Amen. Proverbs 21, uh, 27, the very first verse says, Do not boast about tomorrow, for you do, know, you do not know what a day is may bring forth can I get a witness anywhere in the church you don't even have to get old to understand that's true do not boast about tomorrow for you do not know what a day may bring forth 
Have you ever had the kind of day and said, man, if I knew today was going to be like this, I'd have stayed in bed. Right. And when, I, I, it's not even worth getting up to have this kind of day. Yes. You follow what I'm saying? And that's why you can't, you can't, you can't say so confidently that on tomorrow I'm going to do this, I'm going here, I'm doing this, I'm going to be there at four, I'm here. At don't do that. Don't do that because you don't know what tomorrow may bring. I was planning on coming to the Friday night Bible study, but I didn't know what the day was going to bring. You follow what I'm saying? Here I now find my neighbors on the side of the road, and my whole day changed. Do you follow what I'm saying? But the Bible, how many know what the Bible says we ought to say about tomorrow? Let me see how many real good church folk I got. You know what the Bible says? Huh? What is it? Is not promised, but how we ought to speak about tomorrow. The, Lord. the Bible says, for the believer, we say, if it's the Lord's will, I'll do thus, so, this, that, and the other. If I, we don't put our will over God's will. We say, if it's the Lord's will, I'll see you tomorrow. If it's the Lord's will, I'll be there. I don't want to say it so confidently that I'm coming because now I'm trying to assert my will over God's will. Amen. And that's why we say, when we say the Lord's Prayer, we say, let your will be done right. in earth yeah. as it is in heaven. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So let's not be so confident about the, we plan for tomorrow. You follow what I'm saying? But we're not going to be overly confident. Verse 2, oh my goodness. Let another man praise you and not your own mouth. A stranger and not your own lips. It's wisdom literature. Like I said, you, you, you don't have to be 75 to understand this. Do you follow what I'm saying? Let another man praise you and not your own mouth. Right? right? End of the day, we say, don't brag. Right. If, there, if there is anything that's worth bragging about, boasting about, let someone else say it about you. Right. Right. Footnote, footnote, don't tee them up either. <laughs> Don't give them breadcrumbs so they be like, oh, you want me to say that? No, just if they notice, they notice. If they don't, they don't. Right. You follow what I'm saying? But it's far better for someone else to praise you than for you to praise yourself. Amen. Wisdom literature. Look at verse 3. A stone is heavy and sand is weighty, but a fool's wrath is heavier than them both. Verse 4, wrath is cruel and anger a torrent, but who is able to stand before jealousy? Let me give you this right out of my notes. Jealousy, it is described as the most uncontrollable sin. Fool's wrath, heavy. Sand, stone. But wrath is cruel and anger a torrent. Who is able to stand before jealousy? Here we go, work it backwards. Jealousy leads to anger and cruelty. You get overtaken in jealousy. You get overtaken in envy. Now all of a sudden you're getting mad about what someone else is doing, what someone else is going. Now you've done, it said something or now you've done something out of a cruel spirit. Right. All because the seed of jealousy was in your heart. And so you've got to watch that. Amen. This is stuff you put on your prayer list. And I know you got your top ten things you want from the Lord. But you ought to have five things that you always pray about. Say, Lord, help me with this jealousy. Right, right. How, how, work back with me. How many of you have ever prayed like this? Lord, help me with this because you know how I am. 
Somebody will look at that. They won't get jealous. But Lord, you know how I, the, David said when he prayed, he said, Lord, search my heart. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's in Brother Riddle's heart. I, I don't know what, what's in Jerome's heart. But Lord, search my heart because Lord, you know how I am. Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't help me keep this thing in check, It's going to be the thing that brings me down. Are you with me on this? Wisdom literature. Verse 5. Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. I wish I had 10 people who knew that. Open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. My... My mom had a, uh, whether, whether you knew it or not, she had uh, halitosis. She had, in, in the morning, my mom had bad breath. That's a fancy way of saying that. She had bad breath. And sometimes it would require her to either brush twice or use uh, you know, a mouthwash or something so her breath would be fresh. And I never forget uh, we were out somewhere, and I don't know where we were. And we got into the place, and I'm talking to my mom. And as she's talking to me, I realize her breath is not fresh. And I never said anything. So we got in there, she's talking, now the people are coming, we got to go in, this, that, or the other. I never said anything. So as a result of not saying anything, she never did anything. More people came up to her at that event than I ever seen before. I, every, people just come out, oh, your friend, we're coming out of the woods. On the way home, I finally said something. She said, why didn't you tell me that before we went in? I could have put, popped a mint in my mouth. I could have drunk some flesh. I could have done, there's a whole number of things I could have done. Now, you have let me go on out, and to many of them, now I have embarrassed myself. You follow what I'm saying? All of which could have been avoided if you could have just said, Mom, some, your breath. Okay, well, good, give me a minute. Let me, let me do, you know what I'm saying? The, 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 there's no issue. I love my mother. But, in, but, but I chose to demonstrate my love by not saying anything. When the Bible says the better demonstration of love is when you do say something that causes me to become better. Amen. Do you follow what I'm saying? Amen. I mean, she ripped into me. And then I, and it, the way that really hit me, because like I said, we went up there most times, you know, mom always liked to lay in the back, never wanted to be up front, any of that. Man, people was coming out of the woodworks, all up in her face, hugging her and all this good stuff. And I could have caused her to have a better presentation if I just said something. Mom, be here, take the mint. Just, I didn't even have to say nothing, just put her in her hand. She wouldn't do what to do with it. Do you follow what I'm saying? Don't let that be your testimony. Where you could have said something, done something, and caused someone to be bettered by it. You follow what I'm saying? Then laying back and not saying nothing. Verse 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. Faithful are the wounds of a friend, but the kisses of an enemy are deceitful. The luxury and indulgence of wealth make the best things tasteless. While the hard working person who hungers finds everything bitter, uh, finds everything bitter, every bitter thing sweet. This proverb extends beyond foods to the things in general, which means so much more to those who have little. I got ahead of myself. Verse 7. A satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb, 
but to a hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet that's what I wanted a satisfied soul loathes the honeycomb but to a hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet that's what that's it the luxury and indulgence of wealth makes the best things tasteless while the hard working person who hungers finds every bitter thing sweet. Be careful about becoming rich. Because when you become rich, nothing impresses you anymore. things become tasteless the beauty that God has provided all around you all of a sudden you don't notice it anymore you're not you're not you're not all struck by God anymore you're more impressed with what you have and what you have done do you follow what I'm saying and also the, 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 the Proverbs is full on this watch out watch out for a lazy spirit because when you begin to have too much there's an opportunity for a spirit of laziness to kick in look what he says a satisfied soul I mean that's that mean I just got everything you know loans the honeycomb but to a hungry soul every bitter thing is sweet when you don't have everything it keeps a little hunger in your belly it puts a little drive in your heart. Do you follow what I'm saying? It gives you something to get up in the morning for. Do you follow what I'm saying? And so, and that, that's how we always want to be. That's why I love studying the Word of God. Now, the reality is, at, you can take some period of time out of your life, you can read through the entire Bible. They have many programs. You can read the Bible in a year, Bible in two years, five. You can read through the Bible. It's, it's not an impossible task. But you'll never read through the whole book. Figure that out. You can read the whole Bible, but you'll never ever read the whole book. Amen. The Bible speaks of the wisdom of God in this manner. It call, he calls it the manifold wisdom of God. Anybody with that manifold, manifold wisdom of God? Anybody with me on that? Here, here, manifold, many folds. You know, remember how your mom or your grandmother used to have curtains over the windows? Right? And then in the morning, they want you to go, go down and open the curtains. Pull back the blinds. And when you pull the blinds back, you bunch them together. There's all these folds. You follow what I'm saying? But when they're bunched up, they're like this. But, but at night, you take them and you pull it all, I mean, you open it all out. Sometimes the, 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 the blinds, they would have designs on the back of them. Right. But you wouldn't see it until you open the blinds. And, you, and all those folds began to open up. That's what the wisdom of God like. God's wisdom, there are so many folds in God's wisdom that you can come back to a scripture, a chapter that you have read before you come back to it again all of a sudden you see another fold of God's wisdom you said I've read this three, four, five times but I never noticed that I've read this ten a dozen times but I never picked up on that that's the manifold wisdom of God endless boundless that's why I said you can read the Bible but you'll never read the whole but you'll never get to the end of it because if you ever got to the end of it that means you will have gotten to the end of the wisdom of God but of his wisdom there's what there's no end the book says he has neither beginning nor what nor end you find what I'm saying tell somebody and say I'm hungry Verse 8, like a bird that wanders from his nest is a man who wanders from his place. That do anything for anybody? Like a bird that wanders from his nest, so is a man who wanders from his place. Such are not only out of place, but off duty, 
and in danger. Yeah. Here it is. You want it? If you want it, say, I want it. I want it. Stay close to home. Amen. That's all he's saying. Stay close. Here it is. Jordan's here. Oldest son. 17, 18, whatever he is. This is what I've learned. This is what I've learned about fatherhood. This is what I've learned about fatherhood. Dads, all we do is stay home. That's what dads do. Wives everywhere, everywhere, everything. Dads, we just what? We stay home. And I, I got a witness, I can prove it, right? When the prodigal son wanted to find his father, where did he go? What? Now wait a minute, wait a minute. Trick question, why did he go home? Because what? That's where his father always was. He didn't, he didn't doubt it. He didn't, oh, my dad's out. No, 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 no. If I go home, I can guarantee my father will be there. Do you follow what I'm saying? That's the job of a father. Just stay home. Just, just be there. Whether they want anything, need anything, it doesn't matter. Your job is to what? Stay home. My job is to stay close to the nest. Do you follow what I'm saying? Because if you get that wandering spirit and you start drifting off, all you're going to do is find yourself in trouble. That's what the prodigal son finds. Got himself out and away from the nest, out of the father's care, out of the father's love, out of the father's wisdom, found his whole life in trouble. But thanks be to God, the father stays home. And that's nothing more than a picture for us when we lose our way. When we get too far off base, the confidence we have is that what? We can always go where? Back home. Why? Because the father's still there. Do you follow what I'm saying? Is this helping anybody? Verse 9, ointment, perfume, they both delight the heart. And the sweetness of a man's friend gives delight by hearty counsel. Ointment, perfume, they delight the heart. And the sweetness of a man's friend gives counsel by hearty delight. This go this ties back into verse five, where open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. A real friend gives hearty or weighty counsel. Anybody know what that means? Real friends tell you the truth. Real friends slip a mint in your hand and say, hey, wait, wait, wait. I want to do what's best for you. Do you follow what I'm saying? And a lot of times we do harm to those we love either because we don't say anything or worse yet, I'm going to say it and you're not going to get, you're going to get mad at me, or because jealousy is in our heart, we say the wrong thing instead of help we hurt. Instead of pushing forward, we'll say something to hinder. Do you follow what I'm saying? But real friends give weighty counsel. That means they don't butter you up with uh, uh, flattering words. That's, the, that's what the perfume and ointment is in here. Just flat, oh, 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 on and on. All right, fine. I said you look good once. Remember what I said, all right? <laughs> you got it. Okay, good. I ain't got to tell you eight times. You know what I mean? But what I really want to tell you is this. Because what I'm getting ready to say now is not only going to cause you to smell good, it's going to cause you to look good, feel good, and become good. Are you with me on this? This is real friends. How many of you realize God wants to pick your friends? He's showing you how. Right. Right. All the, the subject, friends. That's the whole Houdini tagline, friends. God's saying, God's saying these are the friends I have already pre-chosen for you. This is how you're going to find them. They won't be the ones running up in your face saying, oh, no, no. These friends will stand in the back. These friends aren't going to say much, but when they do say something, it's going to be weighty. 
it's going to mean something to both you and them. Are you with me on this? Amen. Wisdom literature, verse 10. Do not forsake your own friend or your father's friend, nor go to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Better is a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. I wish I had a real church. This is wisdom literature. This is all it is, Mother Ruler. This is just wisdom. Do not forsake your own friend. Here it is. Here, let me help you. What's the real litmus test on friendship? The real litmus test on friendship is trouble. That's, that's, when, you, that's, when, you, that's when you really find out who your real friends are. Those are the ones that step up in the time of trouble and do what's necessary to cover you. So he's saying here, don't, don't forsake, don't, remember those guys. The ones when you were in trouble who stepped up to the plate for you. Guys, he's saying those are the friends I got for you. You got to remember. He said, not only, not, not only remember your friends, but I love this. He said, remember your father's friends. Are you reading this? Yeah. This wisdom literature. Amen. Remember those that have blessed your parents. Remember those that stood up with your grandmother and your grandfather. And your great, remember them. Remember their kindness. Their kindness wasn't even to you. It was to your father. It was to your mother. He said, remember them. Remember them. You follow what I'm saying? Do not forsake your friend or your father's friend, nor go out to your brother's house in the day of your calamity. Don't go see folks just when you're in trouble. Don't just call when you need something. That's a sure sign you ain't really a friend. You're using me for when you get in trouble. He said, don't do that. But here it is. Better is a neighbor nearby than a brother far away. For the better part of my adult life, my brother always lived far away from me. Either down in North Carolina or out in Indiana. He was never close by. Yeah, he passed through town visiting and all that type of stuff. But he, he, we, were ne we never had close proximity because he always lived in another state. Right? But yet he was my what? My brother. Kin to me by blood. But the Lord has blessed me with so many other friends who are like a brother to me not because of the blood but because of their proximity to me Amen. if I ever got in a real tight there's really nothing my brother could do if you go down if you go down to Greensboro that's seven hours away if you jump out to Indiana that's 12 over the turnpike if I got it if I'm in a jam and I need something it's nothing he can do but if there is a friend who is close by do you follow what I'm saying? He becomes better to me or more to me than a brother who's far away. Amen. Are you with me on that? Amen. There is a friend that sticks closer. I wish I had a real church. I, you, whatever, you do what you want with it. Here it is, verse 11. My son, be wise and make my heart glad that I may answer him who reproaches me. Verse 12. A prudent man foresees evil I wish I had a real church and hides himself the simple pass on and fall into trouble are you reading this how many heard what happened in Logan this week Alany. national I turned on the Phillies game right national television ESPN yes Watching the Phillies game. They start out the broadcast breaking news. Like, what in the world? 
I mean, they, it took almost 10 minutes to get to the ball game because of breaking news in Philadelphia. Six po police officers shot. Hostage situation underway. People at stake. Uh, babies in harm. P hostages in the upper room. Cops, hostages on the roof. Like, what in the world is going on? And you know what the thing that amazed me out of all of that? I, you know, it started showing the stuff before it went to the game. Eventually, I turned to CNN and find out what's going on. The reporter was telling. They got the police tape up. Active shooting scene. Mm -hmm. This guy's shooting at everybody. He just he just opened the window. He's just shooting. Right. Cops, whoever get hit, get hit. Then not matter. Active shooting scene. All over the news, national news, radio, every, just you, you just you, you cannot know what was going on. And you know what happened hour after hour? Did you watch it? Active shooting scene. He's got an automatic weapon. He's shooting cops. And you know what happened hour after hour? Did you watch it? More people kept coming. I mean, they walked up to the tape. I, I, the, guy, the, guy, the, the commander was trying to tell the people on the news, tell the people, don't come down here. This is an active shooter scene. I mean, pretzels in hand, water, ice. You laughing, but that's the word of God. The Bible says a prudent man sees evil afar off and changes his direction. Uh -uh. I'm not going over there. Why? I can see the trouble. It's one thing if I didn't know it and I fell into it unsuspected. But if you can see the danger. They just went on and on about how the, the people coming put their own lives in harm's way. Ricochets, a stray bullet. Now your son is dead. When all you had to do was keep him in the house. They locked the daycare down. Why? They didn't want none of the babies or the parents coming in. Just everybody stay back. Until we can get this thing under control. Stay back. How many times have you saw trouble and went anyway? You know why we run towards trouble? We believe we're Superman. Trouble affects everyone else but me. Watch this. I don't even need my Bible. I don't need it. All I need you to do is live a couple more days. You'll find out. Tr tr trouble is in every king's court. Trouble is in every queen's bedroom. Trouble is in every father's lunch bag. Trouble is in every mother's purse. It does not discriminate. That's why, the, that's why the writer warns you, if you see it, turn aside. Don't be foolish and go right into it. And now you got to call someone and say, I'm in trouble. Not only are you in trouble, now you endanger someone else. Because you prideful or arrogantly just win it. I'm going to, whatever. Verse 13. Take the garment of him who is surety for a stranger and hold it in pledge when he is surety for a seductress. He who blesses his friend with a loud voice rising early in the morning, it will be counted a curse to him. What do you make of that? He who blesses his friend with a loud voice 
rising early in the morning. So not only is, are they loud, they're the first one in the conversation. Meaning what? They want everybody to hear what they got to say. And look, they're not even talking about it. They're, they're here and they're praising you, blessing you. They're being overly flattering. And, and, and they're going overboard because the intent is not really to bless you. I really want to talk about how, how nice your dress is. Did you get it? I'm being overly flattering about her polka dots because what? I want you to notice my pinstripes. <laughs> But I'm not going to just come out and say, hey, check me. No, oh my God, I love polka dot. Oh, there we go. oh, polka dot, polka dot, polka dot. And I'm just waiting. This is the fifth time I done walked by you. Your suit is nice. Thank you. Good night. Get with the program here, Anita. But watch out, but watch out. Because what? That person that says, God says, it will be counted to that person as a curse. Yeah. Yeah. That's how God keeps scores. Wow. That's how God does it. A real friend doesn't loud talk. A real friend tells you in private. So that when you go out, you get the praise. They do see how beautiful the polka dots are. Not because of what you said. You follow what I'm saying? But you actually bright. Do you know you can call someone to look better with a well-placed compliment? You can call someone to feel better about themselves with a well-placed word of encouragement? Do you follow what I'm saying? Amen. Touch your name and say, is wisdom literature. Oh my goodness, watch out. A continual dripping on a very rainy day and a contentious woman are both alike. I wish I had a real church. Look at all the men. I ain't heard the men all day. All of a sudden, mm, amen. Lord Jesus, go preach, pastor. Preach. They've been asleep all morning. All of a sudden, they heard that. They, ooh, wait a minute, the pastor preaching today. Whoever restrains her restrains the wind and grasps oil with his right hand. A continual dripping on a rainy day and a contentious woman are alike. What? They keep going. If a woman ever gets something in her spirit, it's lights out. It's lights out. What? No, you're programmed that way. Nothing wrong with it. It's actually for, it's actually for good. But, look what, this, look what he said. It's not just all women. It says what? A contentious woman. Now, if something evil gets in her spirit, guess what? It still lights out. They're gonna wear that thing. Have you ever have you ever heard a drip? Ever heard your faucet drip? Late at night, finally, everybody in the house quiet, everybody in the bit drip. Drip. It's not a big thing, but guess what? You can't sleep. Why? It's just constantly. Like, what in the world? And even if you're not a plumber, you stick a sock up in there or a pit, you do something. I just need this thing to what? Stop! Do you follow what I'm saying? And, 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 and so this, this is where and, and this, this whole 16, whoever can restrain her, that's just a fancy way of saying nobody can, because you can't catch the wind. That's what he's saying. Whoever can restrain her can restrain her. Can't nobody catch the wind. 
when a contentious woman gets going, it's lights out. So, so look at it. So on the one hand, let me talk to the sisters. Watch your spirit. Because what I'm, what, what he's, what's, what's being said here, if this thing gets in your spirit and it's evil, it's going to drive you. You'll want to stop but can't. You'll want to do better but you won't. Why? Because that thing done got down in your spirit. And you know it's nagging them. You know it's worrying them, but you just keep going. You keep pushing the needle. You got you to say it again. You, never realizing you're not making the situation better. You're actually making the situation worse. Do you follow what I'm saying? Now, turn it the other way. If, that, if something good gets in your spirit. I said it, it, it works both ways. Do you follow what I'm saying? Now, you become what the Bible calls a well of living water. That means that stuff just keeps bubbling. Flow. How, how many people can drink? Everybody can drink out of a well that's what? Flowing. Do you follow what I'm saying? So are you going to be a well of living water? Or are you going to be a cesspool in quicksand that goes down into hell? That's what a woman can do. Do you follow what I'm saying? And then for the brothers, at the end of the day, don't marry a contentious woman. Friends, how many of us have them? <laughs> Ones we can depend on. Don't you do it. Watch this. Why? I'm going to help you. I'm going to help you because I'm your pastor. It doesn't matter how good she looks. I'm telling you, beauty fades. Do you follow what I'm saying? I wish I had a real church. That's all right. I got Mother Riddle here today, so I'm not scared of any of you. I got wisdom on my side. Here it is. Here it is. Here, this is what I want. 17. As iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Whoever keeps the fig tree will eat his fruit. So he who waits on his master will be iron. Iron sharpens iron. Real friends make you better. The only way to sharpen a knife, you need something sharp and strong to run it up against. Do you follow what I'm saying? So, so, so when we come together as men, we don't come together to, to challenge or outdo one another. We come together, what? To sharpen one another. To make you better. I make you better. You make me better. And when we come out of the dressing room, everybody's talking about how well we're doing. Never realizing it was my friend who made me better. It was my friend who told me what I really needed to do. It was my father's friend who told me the real secret of getting ahead. Now everybody's praising me, but it was another piece of iron that did this in my life. I had a real friend who didn't conceal his love but was open and honest. I had a real friend that told me, hey, there's trouble up ahead. Don't go that way. Uh -uh, I've lived that. I've gone down that road. Save yourself. Take another path. That's what real friends do. And in so doing, what? We make one another better. Do you follow what I'm saying? Ask, ask the person, maybe, are you making anyone better? Are you the iron that God is using to make that person better? Are you with me on this? Whoever keeps the fig tree will eat his fruit. So he who waits on his master will be honored. Whoever keeps the fig tree, the gardener, one who does the watering, the one who pulls up the weed. Watch this. The one that does the hard work that nobody sees. That's the one God said, I'm going to feed. God said, that's who this fruit's going to go to. Not to the one out front, not to the one, not to the one telling everybody they keeping the fig tree and ain't doing anything. But how do how many of you realize we have a God that sits high but looks low? The psalmist said, He knows the way that I take. He's watching me. 
He's watching who's doing the real hard work. God said, that's who's going to eat the fruit. Whoever waits on his master will be honored. Now, if I don't say nothing else, I'm going to say this. Everybody look at me. Everybody everywhere look at me. And listen to what I'm getting ready to say. Serve your masters well. I don't say nothing else. Serve your masters well. Who are your masters? Parents. Your employer. Your teachers. Serve them well. Look what the, look what the wisdom said. Because if you serve them well, they are the ones that can honor you. What is it? Friends. We're, we're more concerned about serving our friends well. How many of your friends can really bless you? Not, not many or zero. I mean, I mean, they just can't. That's part of the reason why y'all friends. <laughs> Get that off the tape. Don't, don't let nobody. Birds of a feather flock together. But the people who can really bless you, and I mean cause your life to change in trajectory, are those that are over you. Why? Because they have authority and access to things you don't. And if you serve them well, they can open a door for you. They can make a phone call on your behalf. Amen. And all of a sudden, your life has changed trajectory. Amen. Instead of remaining on this level like the rest of your friends, all of a sudden, your life has shifted and now you're going up. Why? Because one of your masters, I know you don't like that term, but you got to look at it from a biblical sense. All it means is someone in authority over you made a call. Radcliffe used to tell me when I was a young boy, I never forget. He said, John, he said, I'm not saying you can't have friends. He said, but you got to make this shift. Lord's blessing, you got doors, you got opportunity, you got all this stuff. He said, I'm going to tell you one thing and I want you all, he said, your friends that are here with you on the corner, he said, in five years, I guarantee you, they'll still be here on this corner and you will not have missed anything that's what you remember that a long time it's post office talk years ago he said why not make this or go through this door that is open for you do what you he said bro you're not when you come back they're going to be right here doing the same stuff he said, you got masters over you that are opening doors for you. Amen. Is anybody getting anything out of this? I hope I'm not boring you. If I'm boring you, tell me. I'll stop. I will. I'll stop. Here it is. 19. As in water, face reflects face. So a man's heart reveals a man just like you look in water or you look in a mirror and you see an exact replica of what's in front of it you see exactly how it is you follow what I'm saying look what it says so you got face to face here it is so a man's heart so a man's heart reveals the man that's why Delilah was not impressed with what Samson could do. She wasn't impressed with his strength. She wasn't impressed that he could throw a gate and kill a thousand. For that, that, that stuff didn't. She said, Samson, come here. Lay your head in my lap. And the Bible says she got him comfortable until he told her all his heart. 
Once Delilah got that, she had him. Because what? He told me everything. If she would have just written by the reflection, she would have been like everyone else. Just, oh, oh, Samson, Samson. They thought he was a man of no weakness. Delilah got him to lay his head down. And in the comfort and safety and security that she provided the mighty man, she told him, he told her all his heart. Just say, don't, don't, don't be impressed so much by what you see. You don't really know a person, watch this, until you know a person. You don't really know them until they tell you all their hearts. Until then, you just, you, you, you dealing with an image, a shadow. You know what I mean? You don't know who they really are. Do you follow what I'm saying? Here it is. I got to go fast. You guys getting sleepy. Here it is. So let me hurry up. Here it is. Hell and destruction. Oh my God. I wish I had a real church. Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of a man. I wish I had a real church. Dr. Teller used to say this all the time. I used to hear it say it. I almost got to the point I was going to tell, and can't stop saying that. If she said it once, she said it a thousand times. She said this. Tell me if you remember it, those of you who've been around that long. She would say, hell is sitting with his mouth wide open. I don't think we went through one Bible study where she didn't say that. Jordan, one, Jordan told me one day, he said, Dad, you always preach hell and brimstone. And I, I, it's, it's funny that he says that of me because that's what I used to say. I wish I, you'll get it later. You got to live a while to get that. But she used to say, hell is sitting with his mouth wide open. And now that I read the word of God, I understand what she's saying. There is no bottom to hell. There is always vacancy in hell. Hell doesn't get to the point where it says, oh, I can't take anymore, God. After this, everybody gets... No. Wide open. Always room. This is the word of God. Am I making this up? If you didn't read it, you don't have to be. But if you read what I read, never fool. And in like fashion... So is the heart of a man. The eyes of a man never satisfied. Now what, look at, tie, tie your Bible together. Because your eyes are never satisfied, it is the thing that what? Keeps us wandering from where? Home. You, you don't even need Bible this. You just need good wisdom. What do they always tell you when you're growing up? The grass always looked greener where? It's not that it's greener. It's just you're never satisfied. You never get enough. And the danger for us as men, that's the thing that draws us away from our place. We think it's better. We think she's better. You think that job is better. And always, always, never satisfied, never enough. And now you find yourself drifting. When he just told you a few verses for stay at home. That's where I want you. That's your assignment. You ain't got to do nothing, just be there. Stand there. Do you follow what I'm saying? So, so the eyes of a man are never... The refining pot is for silver. furnace for gold. A man, who is, a man is valued by what others say of him. Again, he's just going over what he said before. Let somebody else praise you. Don't toot your own horn. You follow what I'm saying? Let somebody else do it. Better yet, let God do it. Are you with me on this? All right, I got to hurry. Here it is. Though, though you grind a fool in a mortar with a pestle along with crushed grain, yet his foolishness will not depart from him. A fool keeps getting in the same trouble. No matter what you do to him. 
I read a thing on, I didn't read it, I was watching television last night. One of those 30 for 30s, they were doing it on Robin, uh, Robin, Robin Leaf, was it Robert Leaf, Robin Leaf, quarterback who got drafted, Ryan Leaf, Ryan Leaf drafted, he didn't go number one, Peyton Manning went number one, he went number two, this guy they said was literally on top of the world, number one draft choice, money, family, just, I mean you just couldn't, you couldn't get any more than what he had, and it went the next 40 minutes and it just showed his life. Just, just, he just went down. He just, I mean, just, he just, he just went down to nothing. Got addicted to painkillers. He got so addicted to painkillers, he was stealing from his own family. He got so addicted to painkillers, he got connected to a boy's shelter where those who really needed it were getting prescription, he would go in and rob them. Matter of fact, the second time they arrested him, they arrested him coming out of his friend's house. He had snuck in, in the basement and was robbing their grandmother's Vicodin. All because he thought too much of himself. Thought he was untouchable. Thought he'd never go down. Down he went. Are you with me on this? The point I wanted to make out of that, his story, he was a repeat offender. He got arrested three times before he finally hit bomb. And it was the same thing, stealing drugs. Prescription drugs that were not made out to him. The one time he got busted, he got busted 24 hours after he got out. They just let him out. Like I said, a fool just goes right back to the same truck. That doesn't matter. When you're fool, you just go back again. Here it is. Here it is. Be diligent to know the state of your flocks and attend to your herds. For riches are not forever. I wish I could get everybody to understand that. Riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. Just because you're smart doesn't mean your kids will be smart. Just because you have don't mean your kids will have. That's why you need sound wisdom. That's what he's asking. You better get sound wisdom. For riches are not forever, nor does a crown endure to all generations. When the hay is removed and the tender grass shows itself and the herbs of the mountain are gathered in, the lambs will provide your clothing and the goats the price of a field. You shall have enough goat's milk for your food, food for your household, and the nourishment of your maidservant. Use wisdom and take care of what God has given you. That's all he's saying. And the reason why the emphasis is on the animals, because in Israelite history and their culture, Every 50 years, the year of Jubilee, the land went back to the original owner. So really, land ownership, unlike we are today, if you own something, you own it forever until you can't pay the taxes on it or something. But back in Israel, in the year of Jubilee, the land went back to the original owners. So if you built a high structure, all, it didn't matter. Whatever was on that land in year 50, it went back to the original landowner. So he was saying, don't build palaces and houses. Take care of what God has given you. If he's given you a little lamb, if he's given you two sheep, if he's given you four, work with that. He said, if you take care of that, he said, you'll have milk every time you get thirsty. He said, if you take care of that, your children will have clothed every winter. Why? Because what? The animals don't revert back. The land does. But the animal, if you take care of them and honor them the way you, God said, I'll bless what I've given you. And it'll provide for you forever. Do you follow what I'm saying? Wisdom literature. I hope you've gotten something out of it. Amen. Just sayings, things, comparisons that Solomon looked at in life to 
point to the reality and the truth of God. And let us be like Solomon. Of all that he could have asked of God, he said, God, give me wisdom to govern thy. He said, I'm not smart enough. I know what my dad did, but I'm not my dad. I know what my mom did, but I'm not my mom. God, if I'm going to live this life to the fullest, I need the wisdom of God. Order my steps. Lead me in a plain path so that I can reach my expected end. Shall we all stand?